That's a scene from David Cronenberg's 1975 film Shivers, in which a venereal parasite hijacks the sex drive of its human host. Now, it's purely fictional, but it does raise some interesting questions about the reality of parasite aphrodisiacs. <laughs> Shivers seems to make perfect sense, right? Venereal parasites like the crab louse or the protozoan trichomoniasis spread through sexual contact. And you have various parasites that alter host behavior to further their reproductive ends. So why not just combine these two tactics? Hijack the host brain and then turn them into a rampaging sex zombie. Studies show that the cat parasite Toxoplasma gondii can ramp up sex appeal in its unintended human hosts. And varying degrees of sexual behavior hijacking does occur in nature. For instance, some organisms utilize parasites parasitic castration to shut off reproduction in their host in order to hoard all the energy resources for themselves. And in 2014, Dr. Shelley Adamo of Dalhousie University identified a sexually transmitted virus in crickets that rendered the host uninterested in food and hyper-interested in mating. Yet parasite-induced nymphomania is actually exceedingly rare. In a 2014 study published in the Journal of Theoretical Biology, biological mathematician Daniel Maxson and theoretical ecologist Ludic Barrick teamed up to examine this dearth of sexual mind control. The duo used mathematical modeling to create simulated ancestor parasites that don't hijack the host drive along with mutated species that do. They ran several simulations. Sometimes the mutated parasite went extinct, but each time it prevailed they introduced a new, more powerful mutated species that wielded even more sexual power. In effect, the simulated parasite could evolve into an even more effective sex booster. Their results? Most of the simulations did not end in the involved enhancement of sexual mind control. And the researchers presented these speculations as to why this would be the case. First up, sexual hijacking may just weaken the host too much. It's possible that heightened focus on sex prevents the organism from taking care of more important needs, such as food and water. An argument that matches up rather nicely with Dr. Shelley Adamo's cricket parasite. The tactic might work sometimes, but the host is ultimately a hijacked spaceship for the parasite, and you have to keep the engine running. Secondly, sexual hijacking might just cause too much for the parasite itself. A lust-boosting parasite might have to expend too much energy to release those powerful sex hormones, weakening the pilot organism as it struggles to maintain control of its fleshy spaceship. Naturally, the answer might be a little bit of both. Evolution inevitably favors the more economically feasible design. And in the end, there are far better ways to use a host creature to your parasitic, if not cinematic, advantages than inducing a zombified orgy in the town square. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these three videos as well. And don't forget to visit us at StuffToBlowYourMind.com. Parasites are organisms that survive by mooching off a living host body, like yours, from single-celled protozoa that exist harmoniously within us to fleas that suck our blood, to tapeworms that set up shop in our intestinal tracts, humans play host to millions of common parasites every year. The worm beds down into a nice squishy cavity and grows up to three feet long. Finally, it makes its way to the surface of the skin. Now it can emerge from those blisters and unleash larvae to the surface of the water where some other insect might ingest it. And the cycle begins anew. You've just woken up. Something smells musty and sweet. When you open your eyes, your bed has a trail of molted insect shells, rust-colored stains, and tiny smears of excrement. Just saying this makes me itchy.